what's up? You're testing ads consistently. Every single time that you test something, it gets like a 1.6, 1.7 ROAS, then you attempt to scale it. It doesn't hold spend. The ads break and you ask yourself, what am I doing wrong? It's constantly happening again and again. You can't get out of it. It seems like an impossible loop. So you move on to a different product. And to get out of this whole situation here, I have a process that you can just copy and follow, which should get you to you know a couple grand a day. Very, very fairly easily with any product that you test. And that is super important. It's not about the product that you sell. There are no winning products. I promise you there's no such thing the very first step of this process is actually they're gonna make two documents so open up Google Doc or a word document whatever you do and essentially make two docs first of all your customer avatar Second of all, you're going to break down two offers that you want to build. At the end of the day, if your ads don't resonate with people at all, you're not going to make any money with e-com. In fact, marketing at its core is understanding who exactly you speak to, and that is the customer avatar document. So here you're going to break down which awareness stage, right, are most of our customers in right now. Um, what are your deep human desires of your customers? Talk about the cost of inaction if they don't buy your product, right? Actually figure out exactly who you speak to with your offer, with your messaging, with your marketing, so that you can even make good ads in the first place now the second thing actually is you know you're gonna make down make a document with two offers on it the reason for the two offers is that we're actually gonna a B test it so we're gonna have two offers on our store at the same time and just see in real time because the traffic is coming from the same traffic source so it's the same traffic quality which offer actually makes you more money per visitor and that is the metric that we're looking for there so once you have these two documents only then are you gonna start actually figuring out what you do with your ads and the next step is actually before you're gonna rip some content and rip some ads and you know upload them all to your ads manager get your ad account banned all that kind of bullshit and what you actually do is you open up another document and write down 30 40 50 maybe 100 hooks okay because at the end of the day the hook of the video ad the headline of an image ad is 80% of your ad success, okay? And so that's why we wanna test isolated at first. And the reason why we do this is because at the end of the day, if you test whole entire ads immediately, you don't know why exactly they worked. Was it the visual? Was it the headline? Was it the hook? What exactly worked about it? And so what we wanna do is we wanna test hooks in form of text isolated before we do anything else. So what you're gonna do is once you have your hooks that you wanna test, right? And obviously structure and categorize them by awareness stage. And so what you're gonna do then is you're gonna put them on blank image ads. So image ads like this, which is essentially just a white image, black text on it, nothing else. That is the entire concept of the ad. The ads are literally only images with text, okay? And once again, the reason why we do this is we want to isolatedly test, you know, the, the only the text part of the hook, right? And once we have the winners there, then we're going to test everything around it. The audio, the visual hook, the body, the call to actions, everything everything else comes after that, okay? You need to understand that the hook test is probably the most important part of your entire creative testing, okay? And this is something which you not only do once, this is something which you do again and again at scale too, whenever you wanna introduce new concepts into your ad account, whenever you wanna scale, whatever, okay? This is really, really important to not skip this. I do this every single time and everyone that I work with does this every single time and is really, it pays off every single time because it just increases your hit rates a lot. So what you do is essentially you upload these images, you group up like three to five each, it doesn't really matter what campaign structure you use. I usually do ABO so that every single one of these hooks gets some spend. And so what happens after you've tested these hooks is you figure out which ones have the highest click through rate, right? So once they're running, and this is really important, you're not actually looking for sales. You're gonna optimize still for purchase traffic because you wanna get the highest traffic quality. But once they're actually running, once they're in the ad account, and spending money, you're just gonna spend a couple dollars each image, let's say three to five dollars each, and you just look for which ones get the most clicks, the highest CTR, right? And you're gonna see closer clear which ones are the outliers, okay? So what you're looking for is essentially outliers. You're not looking for any specific KPI. I'm not saying, oh, I have to have like at least a 5% CTR or max a 30 cent CPC. No, that's not the KPI that I'm giving you. I'm telling you, when it comes to this hook testing, you should look for outliers, right? So that means once they're running, once they're inside of your ad account, let's say the average CPC is a dollar. If one of these gets a 50 cent CPC and double the click-through rate, right? And not just because of the CPMs are so low, then that is actually a winning hook, right? You look for outliers. You look for stuff that is essentially elevating itself from all the other hooks that you've tested, right? And you need to understand this. Um, if an image ad like this is able or enough to convert someone, it's not a good image ad because it, that means the hook itself
itself is really, really aware and it's not going to scale really high. So the best case scenario is it gets a lot of clicks, very cheap CPCs, but no sales at all, no add to carts, right? And ideally, you want to find winning hooks from every single awareness stage, right? So if you structure my awareness stage and only group up, let's say, group them up in when it comes to the testing strategy by awareness stage, then what happens is maybe you find some winning hooks for the unaware stage. Maybe you're most aware. Maybe you find something in between. So like product aware, solution aware, problem aware, doesn't really matter. You want to essentially have a variety of winning hooks that you can just cycle through everything that's come, come next. But at the end of the day, it's really important to not skip this stage and to actually look for which hooks get the most clicks. And so once you have the winning hook, once you have the data on that, right, what you're going to be doing is you're going to have something which is called the iterative approach of creative testing. Okay. So you're going to take that winning hook, you're going to script an entire ad out of it, you're going to source content or rip content, and then you're going to test the creative. And specifically this part here, this three-step process, when it comes to the scripts, you should follow um, obviously the, 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 the guidelines or the usual stuff of what your ad concept is in. So for example, if you want to do an unaware, like an unaware VSL, like a super long form ad, you're not going to probably just immediately get into the solution, right? You're going to start maybe with a story after the hook, obviously, then you're going to start explaining the problem, maybe, you know, what other solutions the creator tried, and then, then actually get into the solution, then drop the product, then drop the offer, and then do risk reversal. That would be a VSL. However, if you want to do like a UGC type of concept, right? you would probably want to speak to more solution aware people or product aware people. So what you're going to do then is I like really go deep into the solution and immediately explain why your solution is better than all the others, why you're the best competitor. Creators should say all the good experiences that they had with your brand. Okay. That would be kind of the concept. And it doesn't matter what ad concept you have. It could be image ads. It could be everything. Essentially, it all comes down to, you know, starting with the winning hook that you figured out that had the highest click through rate and actually making the ads, scripting the ads in the right awareness stage. And so what you're going to do then is sourcing the content. When it comes to sourcing the content and ripping the content, it doesn't really matter what you do in the beginning. Um, I suggest really putting most of your efforts and time and focus on the hook once again, right? So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be making those hooks with, you know, three different parts. I want you to think of the, I want you to think of the hook from now on in three different categories. There's the text hook or the, what the creator is saying, what we just figured out from the hook test, but there's the visual hook and there's the audio hook. So visual hook is what people see an audio hook is what people hear maybe it's like you've seen this a hundred times like when you have like a super long on a wear ad maybe someone's talking about like a like knee pain or something and then if you're like bone cracking in the background or something like that right stuff like that just increases the engagement but i would say the most important thing really is the um, the visual hook. Okay. So besides actually having a really good content hooks or text hook or a creator, you know, what's say, what she's saying, or he's saying hook, um, actually the most important part after that is the visual hook, what people actually see. And this is going to make or break your ad at the end of the day, right? So it's really important to grab people's attention, to have some movement, have some motion, because at the end of the day, every time there's some movement or something going on, people want to know where that movement goes to, right? People want to see something shocking. People have to stop their doom scrolling. Okay. You're stopping them actually showing they don't want to watch your ad. You have to imagine it this way. Attention spans are terrible, right? That's why the hooks need to be so engaging. And then you're going to only do this a bunch of times. You're going to have really high creative volume. You're going to make a lot of variations, each ad concept, each hook that you test, and then actually test them all right? So you're going to test them and then obviously nothing's going to be profitable. So this is exactly the point I'm trying to make here. Most people stop here. Let's say you skipped all this or let's say you've even done all this, right? All the hook tests, all the avatar two offers, AB test, everything is on, but you test and nothing's profitable. Well, this is the, this is the, 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 the crucial part, which most people kind of quit in. This is where most people just move on to another product, right? That is the biggest mistake that you could make here because now that you've tested these, what you're doing is you haven't lost money. You've bought data. You've invested money into the app platform to essentially build you up so much data to give you so much feedback on your ads, on your avatar, on the hooks that you've tested now that you can just iterate it. And iterations means you have a sprint and you check and you have a retest, you retest, retest again and again and again. So what happens here specifically is you look for the best, let's say top 10, top five, top 1%. It doesn't matter depending on how much volume you've tested with. Essentially, you just look at the best ad that you've had inside of this first actual creative test, right? And you just look at the best stuff and start to iterate it. So you look at the weakest metric. For example, it could be the hook rate. It could be the, 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 the pitch rate or the hold rate could be too high. It could be, you know, a drop off between 25, 50, 50 to 75 in the video. 
It could be the CPM. It could be everything. It could be a lot of stuff, um, a lot of reasons why the ad actually failed. It could also be the conversion rate, by the way, right? This is a super crucial thing. Every ad has a different conversion rate. It's not only dependent on your offer, what conversion rate you get. And so you look at the deepest, worst metric, right? And actually iterate that. So let's say, and this is a pretty common example, people have a really high hold rate or pitch rate. So what happens then is obviously that means that your call to action is weak, right? Too weak because at the end of the day, most people or too many people, way too many people watch that ad to the very last second. And you should ask yourself, okay, what are they doing on your ad? Why haven't they clicked yet? And so that is your job now. So you're going to start making iterations with the same exact ad, same hook, same everything, and change one variable, which is in this case, the call to action. Test a bunch of different call to actions, make it more aggressive, blah, 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 and then retest. You script again, you source the content if you need new one, um, and then you essentially retest. And then once again, by surprise, you're going to iterate again and again and again. And this is possible to do 100, 200, 500 times. It doesn't matter how long it needs to, like, it's completely different. And this is like the winning product thing, which people talk about. If you need no iterations at all, that's when the usual winning product is like, you know, when people upload anything and it works immediately, that's like what people call winning products. But there's no such thing because every concept, every product, I promise you, every angle can make profitably. Like you can, you can scale everything. It just You just got to figure out how. You just got to iterate, retest. Always look at the weakest metric and retest accordingly, okay? This is what an iterative approach is. It doesn't stop there at all because now that we have some ads that are profitable, we have some concepts that are kind of working, now the problem that most people struggle with here when they actually follow the iterative approach is that they still are barely profitable, let's say breaking even, and they just can't scale. They just cap very early on, maybe one, 2K days, just cap and kind of can't move forward than that, further than that, okay? So it's really important to, at this stage, actually start doing two things here, right? So first of all, you're gonna actually, you know, implement showcasing and talking about the benefits of buying multiple of the same product, right? And the second thing is you're gonna introduce a longer funnel than just like add it to product page. However, it's really important to start doing these two things later down the line because at the end of the day, what's really important here, this is like a funnel. I've, I've drawn this here. I It's, it's I drew this here. I drew this here so that you could actually see um, visually what this does. This concept, but both of these things disqualify people, right? Let's say you have an advertorial before sending people to the sales page or to the product page, right? What happens then is obviously the advertorial is going to attract higher quality customers that actually do click through, right? And they're going to buy more and they're going to spend more money and convert higher. However, and this is really important. It's going to disqualify people. It's going to disqualify a lot of people that otherwise wouldn't have bought. They would have bought from the private page only. The same thing for benefits of buying more in ads. It's like a disqualifier inside of your ads because at the end of the day, if you just showcase how you know cool the benefit is of having you know multiple pieces of your product in your ads, what's going to happen is you know both of these things lead to actually people spending more on your website. And so specifically when it comes to making every customer worth more, that is actually what allows most brands to scale because if you're allowed or if you're able to spend more money on Facebook, you're going to win. It's always the guy who spends the most money on Facebook ads who wins a customer. At the end of the day, that's how it works because that, they get the highest quality traffic. They spend the most amount of money. They scale the highest, okay? And so you just got to figure out as the marketer, how do I make every single customer worth three, four, five, ten times of what the average order value is? And it is possible, okay? So you do these two things first because they're already going to kind of prepare everything to buy multiple times. If you show it in your ads, once again, people are going to like automatically be more interested. However, it's going to be fewer keep it's going to be fewer people that actually do click through. Same thing for a longer funnel, right? So if you have a longer funnel, if you have maybe advertorial or listicle or VSL and a sales page, order page, whatever, um, it's really important to understand that from both of these things, people click off and it's less people. However, it prepares them more to, to actually spend more money and to convert higher. So after someone is bought, after doing these things, obviously, right? You're going to actually show them a post-purchase upsell funnel. And this is really important because this is what kind of separates brands between being slightly unprofitable and massively profitable, right? You're going to have fluctuations on Facebook. You're even going to sometimes have fluctuations on your Google ads. It doesn't matter where you are at, where your customers come from. Like you're always going to have some inconsistencies. Some days are better than others. And you need to like overall be very profitable. And the easiest way to do that, the easiest way to increase your AOV, the, the, the first second without spending more money, 
money is the post purchase upsell funnel. So the very first thing, the very first upsell they are going to be showing them is more of the same. This is what the first upsell is called. And usually these work the best. Um, I'm sure you've done this before. I'm mean, just setting up a post purchase upsell. The first one actually hitting a um, some version or some offer which includes the same product that they just got, right? And it's really important to understand that this should be in your entire funnel the most expensive upsell because at the end of the day this is where most people will be right you have to imagine most like every all of your customers see this right so, so they see the thank you page and they all pretty much see this offer right here right so you gotta imagine it like this the more to the right you go the more upsells you actually show them or cross sells or down sells whatever the fewer people are actually gonna see these which means then for you that you can only charge less and less money because the take rates are gonna get lower obviously because fewer people see it once again so to still have a good AOV contribution you still need to make it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper so you start with the most expensive one it can even be more expensive than what they just bought by the way so what I like to do is I like to do like an expensive complete the bundle set or tell something like that or just have if it's a consumable the same product as a subscription that works super well too and if they don't take it they get some type of downsell and by the way for all the upsells if they decline it they get some type some level some version of a downsell right and then what you're going to do is you're going to do a couple steps of cross-selling. Obviously, once again, you're going to get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper the more further on they go inside of this funnel. But at the end of the day, what is really important here to understand is like this cross-sell is, let's say it's like a complementary product. Let's say it's a product which makes sense to buy to the main offer that they just got, right? It's just products that actually make sense, that actually help achieve them the dream outcome more and more and more quickly. Keep in mind, once again, and I think this is really important, make it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper day later down the funnel. Now, this whole post-purchase upsell funnel is something which you have to EB test because I promise you the first time you set up something like this it's not going to work nothing's going to work it's going to sound like this whole concept doesn't work it's going to look like that you're going to be unmotivated and you're going to fall back into the old habits of switching products blah 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 okay so what you have to understand is this especially the first one has to be a B test you have to split test which products which offers for the, each product have the highest take rates and it just takes time to figure this out right you can't give up that quickly you have to figure it out now what you're going to be doing after someone leaves so now that you've we've, we've went through the funnel the first time direct response funnel now we have their email address their phone number and we have them in our Facebook pixel. So now what we can do with that data, is once again, if you just stop put showing stuff to them now, you're still not going to, you know, you're still leaving money on the table. First one is you're going to follow up with emails. Second thing is you're going to show them retargeting Facebook ads, right? So the first thing is obviously a welcome flow and a thank you flow. This is what they get when they buy. And after that, they're going to basically bomb them with campaigns for every new product launch, for every seasonal sale, for every um, event that's coming up for every weekend even you can you can make up stuff it doesn't really matter at all but you got to have to have to send them emails like campaigns and actually figure out like what they really want and this is really important for the campaigns by the way implement something which is called segmentation so what you're going to be doing is inside of your emails like the campaigns are going to have different um, folders of different categories of, of customers, leads that you can have in your emails or your email lists, right? So you're going to structure them by female, male, blah, blah, blah. And so what you're going to do then is once you have like a structure, obviously you're going to send out different emails to women, different emails to men and, also, and so on, right? So different age groups, blah, blah, blah. So it's really important to do that because then each person is going to resonate more with that email. And the second thing you're going to do is retargeting Facebook ads. By the way, segmentation is also possible. So you can basically, obviously on the asset level, target whoever you want, make a custom audience with you know website or add to cards to purchase in the last 30 days, and then actually show them very, very bottom of funnel ads. So every new product launch that you have, you're gonna show them an ad. Every offer focused ad that is kind of doing well on the top of funnel ad stuff, uh, you're gonna just basically show specifically to these retargeting people, and you're gonna do segmentation here too. And that was pretty much it for this video, guys. I promise you if you do this funnel, right, it's going to work. You just have to obviously execute it the right way. And so that's why I, yeah, I want to say thank you so, so much for giving me your most important asset, which is your attention, right? Thank you so, so much for watching this video so far. And uh, yeah, I wish you a beautiful day. See you next time.